Erling Haaland is the best striker in the world right now despite being only 22 years old. He's already broken a ton of records in his short career like being the fastest player to score 50 Premier League goals, being the fastest person to score 4 hat-tricks in the Premier League, breaking the record for most goals scored in a Premier League season with 36 goals, being the youngest player in the Champions League to score 25 goals, and also somehow being able to score 9 goals in one official World Cup game. Erling Haaland is so talented that people are already suspecting that he'll win multiple Ballon d'Ors throughout his career. So, how did a superstar like Holland come out of nowhere from Norway to be the best and most terrifying striker in the world right now. Well, to discuss that, we have to go back to Holland's youth because that's where his journey started. Although Holland is raised in Norway and represents them internationally, he was actually born in Leeds, England on July 21st, 2000. The reason he's born in England is because his father, Alfie Holland, also played professional football and he was playing for Leeds United at the time. However, Erling only lived in England for around three years because in 2004, he moved back to Bryan, his parents' hometown in Norway due to his father retiring early because because of injury related issues. Whether that was because of Roy Key's dangerous challenge on Erling's father and the Manchester Derby remains to be seen, but it's definitely possible that Key's disgusting challenge played a part in Erling's father's early retirement. Going back to Erling Holland though, he started to play in the academy of his hometown club, Bride, at the age of five. He stayed with that academy team throughout his entire youth and then for Bride's reserve team, he impressed a lot, scoring 18 goals in 14 matches. That's when Holland was promoted to the Bride senior team and was given the start in his debut against Radheim when he was only 15 years old. Despite not being able to score for Bride in his debut season, Hall was still offered a trial by German club Hoffenheim before deciding to join one of the biggest clubs in Norway, Mold, to play under Norwegian legend Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Two months after signing for Mold, Hall finally made his debut for the club at 16 years old in the Norwegian Cup game against Volda Thi, where he scored on his debut and immediately showed his talent. Now to wrap up his first season for Mold, he got a total of 4 goals and 1 assist in 20 games. Obviously, these weren't world class stats from Holland, but he was only 16, it only goes up from here. And the next season, Holland drastically improved for Mold as well. In the 17-18 season, he managed to get 12 goals and 4 assists in 26 games. More importantly, in a game against Brand, he scored 4 goals in 21 minutes in that singular match. And this just shows how dominant Holland was in the Norwegian league. Additionally, he went on to receive the Breakthrough Player of the Year award and also finished that season as Mold's top goal scorer. This obviously caught the eye of several clubs around Europe and one of them was Erling's father's old club, Leeds United. However, Erling Holland and the people around him played it smart and decided to join Austrian Bundesliga champions Red Bull Salzburg on a 5-year contract. He could only join Red Bull Salzburg in the winter time and he barely played for the remaining of the 18-19 season, only managing to play in two league games and scoring only in one of them. He also left Salzburg before the end of the season so he could participate in the U20 World Cup with Norway. And at this tournament, Holland finally got to show his ridiculous goal scoring talent. Now the U20 World Cup was actually really poor for Norway in all honesty. They lost to the Uruguay U20 team 3-1 in the opening game. Fun fact, other top striker Darwin Nunez scored in that game. Then in the next game against New Zealand, Norway lost 2-0. So at this point, Norway were already out of the tournament and the game against Honduras in the last group stage game was a game of pride. And in this game, Holland shocked the world. Norway destroyed Honduras 12-0 and Erling Holland went on to score 9 goals in that game. And this miraculous performance from Holland and Norway made this their biggest ever win at the U20 level. And despite Norway being eliminated in the group stages, Holland still went on to win the golden boot for that U20 World Cup. I personally remember when Holland scored 9 goals in this game. It was all over social media. Now the following season, RB Salzburg decided to have Erling Holland as a starting striker and he did not disappoint. In the Austrian league alone, he scored a grand total of 16 goals got 6 assists in 14 games. He had more goal contributions than games played in the Austrian League in his first season as a starter. That's mad. However, early Hall for Salzburg in the Champions League was also a beast and that's where top clubs really started to take notice of him. In his first Champions League game ever against Genk, he bagged a hatchet, immediately getting off to a hot start. Then in the next game against Giants Liverpool, he scored a goal in an almost comeback against the Mentality Monsters. Then against Italian Giants Napoli, he scored 2 goals at home and then in the away game, he bagged another goal. He then finished off his group stage UCL campaign pay with the goal against Gank in the away game as well. Now, although Salzburg didn't qualify for the round of 16 of the Champions League, they at least qualified to the Europa League. However, Holland did not play for Salzburg in these Europa League games. Why is that? Well, despite only being a starter for Salzburg for half a season, he was already attracting a ton of European interest from top clubs in the world, like Manchester United, Juventus, and Manchester City, to name a few. However, the club that won him over was none of these clubs. It was actually Borussia Dortmund in Germany that got a signature and signed him for around 20 million euros in January. What a steal. Real Real quick, if you made it this far in the video, please remember to subscribe. It's completely free and you can always unsubscribe later in the future if you want to. Back to Erling Holland though, he made his debut against FC Augsburg with him starting on the bench. However, he came on in the second half and managed to score a hat-trick within 23 minutes in a 5-3 win. Holland got a hat-trick in his debut for Borussia Dortmund. That's crazy. His form did not slow down though. In the next game against Cold, he came off the bench and scored after 12 minutes and then he went on to get a brace 10 minutes later. These 5 goals in 
two games made him the youngest player to get this achievement in the Bundesliga. These amazing performances also helped him win January Bundesliga Player of the Month when he hasn't even started a game yet. Now it was time for the Champions League Round 16 where Borussia Dortmund had to face PSG. This was a big game for Holland, especially because he was playing against his rival for years to come, Kylian Mbappe. However, Holland definitely won that first leg battle. Holland went on a bag of brace and a 2-1 win for Borussia Dortmund and his second goal was a thing of beauty for early. His meditation celebration also became iconic with him preaching that meditation is good for you and everyone should do it. I mean, he's not wrong. Anyways, BVB ended up losing that second leg, but early Holland still had a very impressive season with him getting 44 goals and 10 assists in only 40 games throughout the entirety of the 1920 season. Holland had 54 goal contributions in only 40 games. That's a ridiculous stat for a 19 year old footballer. How was he so good? Well, his former teammate at RB Salzburg might have the answer. Max Wilber spoke about Holland's maturity despite being really young and said, Holland is an absolute top professional. While we are playing cards on trips away, you can see him reading some scientific articles on how he can improve his sleep or diet. He was always looking for the smallest detail that he can improve to take another step forward. Early all just seems so serious about his career and so laser focused that he always wants to find ways to improve for himself. However, one thing he doesn't take seriously about football though is his interviews. Watch this. After the final whistle, you and the whole teammates, you were going to the south stand, the famous yellow wall, which was empty today, of course. Uh, why did you do that? Yeah, why not? He's the biggest talent in the world, then what are you? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm over 20 years, so I'm getting old now. So what's your secret? Uh, you scored 10 times now in the Champions League. Uh, hard work. Now you might be thinking it might be a little too difficult for Erling Holland to get similar stats because of how crazy the 54 goal contributions number is. Well guess what, Holland got similar stats in the next season. In 41 games in the 2021 campaign, Erling Holland managed to get 41 goals and 12 assists in 41 games. This means he got 53 goal contributions this season, which means he only got one less goal contribution from the season prior. So Holland getting these types of similar numbers for two seasons in a row shows that it isn't luck. He's just that good. And honestly, it truly felt like Erling Holland was a robot pretty much built to improve every single season he plays. However, the 21-22 season didn't go to play. And don't get me wrong, early Holland still performed well with him getting 29 goals and 8 assists in 30 games, which does mean he still had more goal contributions than games played for Dortmund. But still, it's definitely a downgrade for the two seasons prior. Why? What happened? Well, he dealt with a lot of injuries this season, which kept him sidelined for a decent amount of time for Dortmund, which also shows why he didn't play as many games as well. Also, Norway were trying their best to qualify for the 2022 World Cup and were really close to doing so. However, they got third place in their group, falling behind the Netherlands and Turkey late into the qualification process. However, that wasn't Holland's fault because he was injured for the last few important games of qualifying. It was just rough luck for Holland and it sucked not to see him at the 2022 World Cup. The 2021-22 season for Holland was the last time he ever played for Borussia Dortmund and finished off his impressive two and a half seasons with the club with 86 goals and 23 assists in 89 games. These stats are insane. Holland is definitely a robot. Anyways, Holland had a release clause that summer from Dortmund that would allow him to leave for around 60 million euros, which is pretty cheap considering how talented Holland is. Man City got lucky with this release clause because they didn't have to overspend on him and got him to sign for the Manchester club. It felt obvious that Holland was going to join Man City, not going to lie. Not only did they desperately need a striker, but also the fact that this was Erling's father's old club, so it felt like a host we hope for the Holland family and a no-brainer for Erling to join this Manchester City side. Man City fans were obviously hyped with the signing of Erling Holland as well. After all, he is one of the best talents in the world. Holland is also currently having himself a pretty impressive season, but he did have a slow start. In the Community Shield game against Liverpool, Holland made his professional debut for City. However, they lost 3-1 and Holland missed a wide open center. I remember seeing all over social media after that that Holland was going to flop in the Premier League. But oh boy, we were all so wrong. He started off the Premier League with a bang with him scoring two goals against West Ham, one against Newcastle and then a hat-trick against Crystal Palace and then another hat-trick the week after against Nottingham Forest and then a few games later he also scored another hat-trick and got two assists against Manchester rivals Man United. These hat-tricks made Holland the first player to score three hat-tricks in a row at home in the Premier League and this also made him the quickest player in Premier League history to score three hat-tricks, beating out Michael Owen. However, Holland has broken a few more records than just that. Holland is the first person to score 50 goals in his first 10 games, the most anyone has ever done before. He's also the fastest person to score 4 hat-tricks in the Premier League. He also became the fastest player to reach 20 Premier League goals, and also the first player to score 20 goals before January. Most importantly though, he broke the Premier League goal scoring record by getting 36 goals in the Prem, beating out the legs of Andy Cole, Alan Shearer, and Mohamed Salah. He's also broken some of Pep Guardiola's records too, like being the fastest player to reach 25 goals under Guardiola. Guardiola and be the top goal scorer for Guardiola in one season when he scored 22 goals. I can go on and on about the records Holland has broken so far, but then we'd be here for hours. Just know that overall in Holland's first season at City, he's got 52 goals and 9 assists in 53 games. Yet again, Holland has more goal contributions than games played. He's ridiculous. Not only that, Holland has played a significant part in helping Manchester City win the treble this season, being the second English club to do so. Man City came back against Arsenal to win the Premier League title, then for the FA Cup final, Holland started the match as Man City beat local 
rivals Man United 2-1. And for the icing on the cake, the Champions League, Man City took down Inter Milan in the final 1-0 thanks to Rodri. Even though Holland didn't score in the two finals I mentioned, he still played an extremely important role in the competition and was the key reason, in my opinion, why Man City won the treble. I also think it's safe to assume that early Holland will definitely have at least a couple of Ballon d'Ors by the time he retires. I have full confidence in that. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see more content like this whenever I upload them. Also, if you want to learn more about Holland's Premier League rival Darwin Nunez, check out this video right here. You definitely won't regret it.